Mystic Glow Lady here. How are you, Pisces? Yes, that is Miss Bella May. Running around, creating havoc, doing what dogs do. <laughs> Does that mean that you're going to have some interruptions coming up this month, Pisces? Oh, dang, do we have to go with the flow again? <laughs> Yeah, we've become quite good at going with the flow. Sometimes people want to come and uh, uh, they can't really ruffle our feathers, can they? <laughs> they go against our scales. Our scales, the balance of justice. <laughs> oh, thank you to all who have liked, shared, subscribed, commented. And for those of you who have gotten personal readings from me, bless you. That is what keeps me going. And it is my life path to do what I do. This is what I was meant to do. And if you want to be happy, then be you. Okay, that's a big challenge sometimes. Okay, it's like, who am I? What am I? We have a general reading here for Pisces. And what we are doing is putting Pisces into the first house. And yes, you hear Thomas making his voice known. So Pisces, Pisces' son in the first house is a general reading. Your ascendant, which is your time of birth in the first house, okay, that's where the ascendant goes, Okay, so that would be more personal to you. And then with the moon, the moon is your emotion. So you will hear the readers tell you to listen to all three. That way you have more pieces of your puzzle in order to identify, okay, where there might be some issues and to help you, you know, go that stream a little bit better. Don't you want to know where that log in the in the middle of the stream is? You know, don't you know, want to know where, okay, let me go around this corner because that way there's a backup. That's what astrology is, is to let you know symbolically, okay, this can happen. Alrighty, so Pisces, in your first house, you have Neptune. Neptune, oh, it's in at home in Pisces, of course, you know, the illusions, delusions that we sometimes find in alcohol and drugs, you know, being careful. Now, Neptune is retrograde. It's retrograde until the 19th, and then it's going direct. It doesn't mean that it's going to change very much because it's staying in seven degrees, you know, where we have been seeing the truth that has been coming out all around us, we've been seeing it better, well, now that it's going direct, okay, we're not going to, it's not going to be as, as open, okay, obvious, I should say, you know, it's still going to be open, but not as obvious, but if we are learning, you know, if we're on our, our spiritual, our spiritual quest, and we are learning, then we're going to navigate it much, much easier. Now, on the bottom, the energy that you have to work with is the king of pentacles. Pentacles is money, you know, being rich in, in yourself, <laughs> you know. It's like feeling valuable, all right. Don't, don't listen to others who you know, want to make you feel less than, that just empowers them, okay? Now, in your first house, you have the five of pentacles, the material trouble. Okay, now what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on have or have not? That's something to be aware of. In your second house, you have Aries. Second house is your finances, your possessions. And Aries with Uranus, the unexpected transformation. Okay, unexpected change. What unexpected change can you do with money? The emperor. 
the Emperor. Interesting. As some of you who have been following me know, I have a federal civil rights lawsuit that I wrote. And, hmm, the Emperor in my second house of finances, does that mean that that lawsuit just might come in? You know, it's saying at the beginning, material trouble. Well, does that mean that finances might come in from that judge? It might say, okay, yes, we can proceed forward. Or is that judge saying no, and that's why there's no money? Hmm, I guess we'll have to keep going on, won't we? Okay, so be aware of the money in your second house, all right? In your third house, you have Taurus. Taurus is that grounded, okay? Grounded, I have. And second or third house is your communications, your short distance travel. And you have the Six of Cups, the pleasure. So finding pleasure in your communications, finding pleasure in your short distance travels, okay? Um, get out of yourself. All right, and even if that means going for a walk, walking is good for us, okay? Walking is really good energy. Now, you have Gemini in the fourth house, in the fourth house of home, and you also have a full moon there on the 25th, okay? And what needs to be let go of in your home, okay? You have the universe. The universe is... is in the universe is your home honey so don't worry about your home now you're going home <laughs> just a matter of time so what is it you know when we are focusing on the not have we miss what we do all right so the universe in your home what is it that you want where in the world do you want to live it looks pretty good for the home, and that's exciting to me. Cancer in the fifth house. Cancer is the I feel energy, and it's in your fifth house of fun, creativity, sex, children, rock and roll, and you have an ace of cups. What kind of new beginnings in love are you creating in there? Is one of your friends now becoming more lovable to you? Interesting. I feel lots of fun with my friends in November. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Leo. Leo in the sixth house of work. Health, service, daily routine, in your work, okay? Now, you have an Eight of Swords, the shortened force, all right? What is not working? What is not working, all right? That is, 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 that needs to be fixed. And, and then it's like, I'm also, you know, hearing, it's like, well, wait a minute, working to fix things, you know, working, helping people to heal, all right? That's what I'm feeling. I'm not feeling some of you, yes, okay, because of the first house, if you do not take care of your health, the issues will be more apparent. Those of you who have been recognizing health issues and have been doing something about them, okay, we're okay. All right, we've identified what needs to be fixed. All right, so that's a biggie in your health and work sector. All right, if if it's if 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 it's not working, get it fixed. Okay, get it. You know, identify identify the problem. Identify the problem, then you will find the solution. And a lot of it, you know, we as Pisces do tend to. Uh, med med medicate, make ourselves feel better through other substances outside of us. You know, food, sex, drugs, alcohol, gambling, shopping. What is it outside that we have been doing and buying and 
wait a minute, do we have anything left inside? Okay, so, you know, outside manifest is illness within. So if you're doing extra outside of and wondering why you're not well, that's a good, a good, yeah. Yes, okay, so Virgo, Virgo is in your seventh house of relationships, and it is jam, jammed, pack, packed in November, okay, so your relationships, Virgo, I analyze, I organize my relationships, we have Venus, at 21 degrees, Mars at 22 degrees at the beginning of the month. Plus, we have Jupiter, who's going to be there until next year, multiplying good relationships. Multiplying relationships. Good is your choice. Okay? We have choice. All right? So, just because there's a relationship that's out there, you know, and... It doesn't mean it's a good one. You know, it could be a karmic one. And if you're in a relationship, this is a great time for relationships. A, a great time. You know, you have Venus, Mars, kissy, kissy. It's going to be moving into Libra, into your 8th house. Uh, Venus on the 9th and Mars on the 13th. You know, they're going to finish up the month in your 8th house of other people's money. So in your relationship sector, there's some good stuff that's going on in there. Now, Ten of Wands, the oppression. What is what is the holdup? What is the holdup? You know, is it that karmic relationship that I was just talking about? Okay. So when you're looking for relationships, make sure you write down this is what I want mentally, physically, spiritually. And this is what I don't want, okay? You have three red flags. You know, you got three checks on the don't want. Don't bother. You know, don't be so hard up that you have to have a relationship. Otherwise, you're going to get one of those relationships that are karmic to teach you a lesson what kind of relationship that you don't want. So how much time and energy are you going to spend on a relationship that is not working for you? How much are you going to lose when it's time to finally say, enough, enough. I can't, I won't do it no more. Okay? Took me 18 years. Yeah, the scars around my face are starting to match with my wrinkles. But, yeah. Sometimes when you open your mouth, people don't like what you say. So I lost everything when I finally said enough. And uh, it was painful, real painful. But I've grown real strong. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do it again. Mm -mm. Different name, different face, same. Uh -uh. No, I paid. I paid my price to learn that karmic relationships... <sighs> Give you strength. Mm -hmm. Eighth house. Love. Now remember, Venus and Mars are going to be moving up into the eighth house. They're going to be moving up into Libra. Libra is that balance. Eighth house, other people's money. Death, taxes. We have Mercury in there at the beginning. Okay, Mercury is there. It's going in to Scorpio on the 3rd, Sagittarius on the 21st. So Scorpio, um, ninth house, Sagittarius, 10th house, okay? Loving in the 8th house. Now, I'm feeling it's going to be, we are going to be getting some love. We are going to be shown the love through other people's money. So be open. Okay, be, be open to receiving good from others. Now, in the ninth house, you have Scorpio. And the sun is in Scorpio until the 23rd when it moves into Sagittarius. And you also have the new moon there. The new moon is there on the 11th. So when you're looking at your long distance travel, 
your communi or communications, long distance travel, your higher learning, your spiritual quest, communications came out of there too. So when you're talking about, you know, and you have the Herophant, are you teaching or are you learning? It seems to be a great time to go on that spiritual quest. And going on a spiritual quest doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go anywhere. Okay? You can take that spiritual quest in your home. Whether you are watching videos on YouTube. Okay? Um, <laughs> you know, you can really learn a lot on YouTube. You can really learn a whole lot at the library. How do you like to learn? What is your way of learning? Do you learn by reading? Do you learn by seeing? Do you learn by hearing? Identifying how you learn best makes it easier to learn, makes it more fun to learn. So what kind of new beginnings are you doing? What kind of new beginnings are you doing in November? What kind of higher learning? What kind of spiritual quest? Sagittarius. Sagittarius in the 10th house of career. What's up with your career? You have Saturn in there. Things are changing. Things are changing. The sun is shining on your career. What is it that you want to do in your career? Oh, good stuff. Good stuff shining. And, oops, I got to take a break. Woo, sorry about that. That was the garbage truck, and I didn't want to have to yell and scream over top of the garbage truck. That's, uh, yeah, they usually come earlier, but Murphy's my uncle. Did you ever hear of Murphy's Law? If it can, it will go wrong at the worst opportune moment. So, yeah, I've said for a long time that Murphy is my uncle, so I have learned to go with the flow. <laughs> it makes things much, much easier. All right, so we were talking about the career and the love that's shining, you know, giving some love to our career. It's like, yay, we deserve it, yay. After all of the grief that we have gone through, that we continue to go through. I mean, no wonder we're the 12th sign. Gee whiz, none of the other ones would have been able to handle it. Uh-huh. Okay, Capricorn. Capricorn is in our 11th house, the 11th house of friends, associates, hopes, wishes, and you have Pluto in there. And Pluto is that change and transformation. So if your friends are not growing with you, okay, Ace of Swords, okay, we can only help those around us so much and then it comes to a point where we have to have that communication about psychic vampires if we want to keep those friends in our lives okay so um you know friends some are silver some are gold okay keep the what, what is that make new friends keep the old some are silver and some are gold yeah. Okay. Where's the value of your friends? New communications. New friends coming in. Okay. So if the old aren't, you know, what is new? Now, Aquarius. Aquarius, the I know energy. Aquarius in the 12th house. 12th house of hidden enemies secrets, jails, institutions, and you have the seven of swords, the unstable effort. Now, as I said, in the sixth house, and now also in the twelfth house, what kind of healing can you do with your work? Okay, now we've had a lot of pressure 
on us Pisces we've had a lot a lot of challenges and you know hey man if it's not going good this way we turn this way all right you know yeah we we flip-flop we flip-flop we tend to flip-flop according to a higher you know a higher spiritual connection now, in using what we have, how can we help to help others, okay? Um, that's going to be registering big. Excuse me. And not, not just the how can we help others, but where is that limit to helping others before it detracts? from us okay remember uh in that first house we have that material trouble okay all right the five of pentacles within we need to get fulfilled all right are you giving out to others or are you getting you know a reciprocal flow of energy where it goes back and forth or is it all your energy coming out and depleting okay so when we are dealing with all right when we are dealing with others all right communicate hey man you know sorry but you're 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 too much stress you're too much effort you're too much energy you, you, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I'm just going to back up. I mean, if you don't have the energy to tell someone who is draining you, well, then don't talk to them. Don't answer their phone. You know, don't, you know, if, if they constantly are pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling, they're pulling you down. All right. Now, if you have the energy to help, then by all means, we want to help people. But we want to help people heal and stand on their own two feet, not to be on your back so that you can carry them the whole way. OK, they have two good feet. There's no reason that they cannot walk. I'm not saying not to help those who can't, who do not have. I'm saying to be selective okay be selective because if they're depleting you they they they're, they're if they are depleting you they're giving you a karmic lesson okay learn it all right uh watch blowing too much money on yourself um the only pentacles that came up was the material trouble Okay, so that is putting out way too much energy. You have love in the eighth house. You have emperor in the second house of wealth. So financially, it's not going to be bad. Financially, you're going to be okay. But it's the energetically with you this month. Are you going to be okay? Okay, what what are you what are you doing? Are you allowing others to deplete you? I mean, that seems to be a big one in November. You know, yes, we do want to use our abilities to heal society. You know, we do want to help people, but we have to remember that there is a help and there is an enable. So if you are enabling, if you are allowing people to act in the, in the same form and fashion, well, where is our part in it? Okay, where is our part in it? And something that I used to teach people to do, and let's see if we can get it. And... This is what I used to do to people, and um, it works. It works because, especially at first, you know, when when you're not used to um, saying when somebody asks you a question, you tell them that you have to check your schedule. 
Uh oh, did that read backwards? All right, check my schedule. Yeah. Sorry. No. And remember, no is a complete sentence. Okay? You don't have to go into explaining your no. Okay? No is an answer. No is a complete sentence. So when you have people who are draining you, okay, they're draining you, the answer, no. No more. No more drain. I am there to help people. But I am not the, um, uh, let me see, how do I say that, the dumpster? So, okay, when you're helping people, don't enable, all right? Um, it looks like a good month. I mean, yeah, we have challenges. What else is new? <laughs> really, what else is new, Pisces? You know, we are, we are the last sign for a reason. We have way more strength than a lot of others in order to handle the things that come in and out. And remembering to live as a spiritual being will make us much happier, okay? It will make us much, much happier than the material possessions could ever. So um, just watch putting, you know, other, other substances in. You know, outside, you know, watch what you're putting in. You know, be of light. And remember to surround yourself with that light. Because it seems like, yeah, okay, there might be some, you know, problems with attacks here and there. But what can we do? We can stand up and empower ourselves. When we stand up and empower ourselves, we can empower others. Okay? So, Pisces, I love you. Ah, it's such a challenge, but somebody has to do it. <laughs> See you. Love you. Bye.